In this special edition video, we delve into one of the most pressing health threats for humanity. Today we discuss antimicrobial resistance. We will go through what it is, what you can do to help overcome this risk, and what the plans are for the future. And what better way to do that than visiting the lab that discovered the first ever antibiotic. Come with me to the Fleming Museum and we will speak to Dr. Emily Scott Deering, who is the engagement lead for the Fleming Initiative. So Emily, 96 years ago, the first ever antibiotic was discovered here. Can you tell us a bit about the story of how Alexander Fleming came to this discovery? I love being in this room. It's such an important turning point in our everyday experience of health and of, of medicine, the moment that happened here. So picture the scene, Alexander Fleming's just got back from holiday. Uh, it's a September morning and he's coming back to check on his quite cluttered lab bench. <laughs> he's not the tidiest. Um, and he'd left out, actually deliberately, um, he'd left out some of the Petri dishes with the experiments he'd done before his holiday. Uh, and he got out his magnifying glass to have a really close look at them and see if anything interesting and additional had happened while he'd been away. Only an eagle-eyed observer like him would have spotted the significance of what he saw on one of those dishes. But it turned out that a spore of mould had landed in one of these dishes and while he'd been away had grown mm -hmm. and what he spotted was and we can see it here in this in this image of the petri dish you can see the mold growing here and the dish should actually be covered in these big spots of bacterial colonies mm -hmm. um, they should be all over the dish but instead something in this mold is kind of causing a zone of death to the bacteria where it's just actually exploding them all and they've all died and he noticed this emptiness this pattern and realized that something in this mold had the power to kill bacteria and maybe it had the power to help us yeah. and keep us safe from bacterial infections. The public can visit this museum four days a week Monday to Thursday it's open from 10 a.m till 1 p.m and other times by appointment so do come check it out uh, but the person you really ought to meet is the curator Kevin Brown. So Kevin, how does antibiotic resistance come about and how have we got to where we are today? When you think of it, bacteria have survived for millions of years, mm -hmm. so they should be good at it by now. Antibiotic resistance with penicillin started to appear fairly early on. Almost as soon as it came into use, the bacteria began to fight back. Yeah. Now Fleming was warning of those dangers 81 years ago, and he is the man who discovered penicillin, actually warning people of the dangers. He saw penicillin as very much a strong weapon against infection, and that it should be kept back in reserve against the most severe illnesses. Unfortunately, his advice was ignored. But in his 1945 Nobel Prize speech, he uh, warns of the dangers of antibiotic resistance. But as new antibiotics were developed or existing ones modified, the whole problem could be kicked into the future. Mm. Sadly, the future is now. While scientists are working hard to discover new antimicrobials and policymakers are working on behaviour change around antimicrobial use, this is what you can do to help prevent antimicrobial resistance. We usually break up this advice into what to do before you have an infection, what to do during the infection, and what plans we can make for the future. Let's start off with the most simplest measures, and that is hand washing. It's the most important step in preventing the spread of infections. Only use antibiotics when clinically indicated. Your medical professional will be able to discuss this with you and make sure that it's the right decision for your case. Just like hand washing, the emphasis is also on prevention. And one successful way to do this is by utilizing vaccines. If you or anyone in your family are prescribed antibiotics, antibiotics, take them exactly as prescribed and never save them for later or share them with others. As part of this, ensure that you've finished the prescribed course of antibiotics. Whilst we as individuals are working on preventing infections from happening and using our antibiotics correctly, scientists are working on better diagnostics and working on new antibiotic discoveries as we speak. Emily, we're in front of the Lindo Wing, which has seen many of the royal members of the family being born. What does antimicrobial resistance mean for maternity services and neonatal services? These are really significant moments in our lives are 
affected by whether our antibiotics work and can keep us safe. We're at super high risk of infection when we've delivered our babies. Our, our newborn children, young children, are at increased risk of infection. Um, so these are the kind of moments that really remind us how important it is that these medicines keep working. And similarly, in the buildings all around us, the operating theatres here, if any of us or our families ever need to have an operation for something, a surgical procedure, again, we need the antibiotics to work to keep us safe. Cancer patients are extra vulnerable to infection, so there's lots of moments that touch lots of our individual lives where it's so important that these medicines are available and we use them sparingly so they're there when we really need them. So what's been done to inform the public about the antimicrobial resistance threat and what projects are on its way to bring this message across and educate the upcoming population? The Fleming initiative that I'm involved in is taking a really cool approach to directly involving the public in finding the solutions to this so we don't think we should leave it to the scientists. We're standing across the way from a building that's on the campus of St Mary's Hospital um, and we're planning to redevelop the whole building into a really exciting new research and public space that'll have labs, it'll have clinics, so all the things you might expect the kind of the sciencey side to do to try and see what new solutions we can come up with is, to this problem. But because so much of it is about the behaviours, the decisions you and I make yeah. when I go to the doctor with my children, when I'm deciding what food to buy in the supermarket. You know, there's all sorts of decisions we make. And so we're creating a, a brand new exhibition and event space as part of that building so that our local communities, the nurses at the local hospital, anyone who wants to get involved can come and work out what the solutions might be together. So the Fleming Centre in London is due to open for the centenary of Alexander Fleming's discovery of penicillin in September 2028. We all need to change our behaviour and recognise that antibiotics and antimicrobials are a precious resource that we need to protect and only use in situations that are clinically justified. It is estimated that antimicrobial resistance was responsible for 1.27 million deaths worldwide in 2019. That is the population of Cyprus dying every year. The UN estimates that by 2050, 10 million deaths could be attributed to antimicrobial resistance and superbugs. That death toll surpasses cancer. So play your part and spread the awareness to help save our future.